Hello everyone, this is Nyessa, and welcome to the 200 subscribers question and answer video, or what is likely to be part one of the question and answer session, because so many of you submitted questions, and some of you submitted several, and the questions that you asked are largely the type that I could ramble on and on about if I let myself. So this might go on a while and I'm likely to separate it into multiple parts so that they're more manageable chunks. Um, so I'm going to put up on the screen a list of the people who have submitted questions that I'm going to answer today in the order that I'm going to answer them. Now I decided not to go in a strict, I don't know, there are a couple of different organizational methods I could have used. I could have gone in alphabetical order, I could have gone in order of who submitted first, but I decided to group these questions loosely by topic um, so that they would be a little bit easier for me to answer and if I answered something early on that might be um, sort of background for a later question, it would be easier to do that. And there are a couple of uh, circumstances where I think that will work out. So I'm going to be a little bit more rambly in this videos, I suspect. Now normally my sort of update videos, let's talk videos, are fairly scripted or at least outlined. But this I'm just gonna go with the flow pretty much. I might do a little bit of editing in case I get really awkward, which is quite likely, but um, you're going to hear a little bit more of what I sound like in real life, I guess, when I'm not playing a character and when I'm not reading from a script or an outline. Um, so yeah, a little bit more me, a little bit more awkward. Hopefully you won't mind that too much. But with that said, I think it's time to get started with our first question. Our first question comes from the Game Master 332 who asks, do you prefer more story-based games like Mass Effect or more open games like Skyrim? Oh, of course, I have to choose the most difficult question that anyone asked me to go first. <laughs> If you ask anyone who knows me in real life, they will tell you that I am terrible at making decisions. Especially choosing favorites is really, really difficult. I don't have a favorite movie or a favorite book or a favorite song or a favorite game, but I'll, I'll try, I'll try. Okay, so Mass Effect versus Skyrim. I'll start by saying that I have never actually played Mass Effect. Um, I have it. I have 1 through 3, so I intend to play these games, but I haven't yet, and I have remained almost 100% spoiler free, miraculously. My brother has commented that it's really mind-boggling how little I know about the series, considering that I exist on the internet at all, <laughs> but somehow I have managed to avoid spoilers. So I will talk about Dragon Age instead, because my understanding is that they're very similar in style. Um, so, oh, this is a tough one. Let me think about this for a second. So you all know that I'm very story focused, and for me, in a story, Character is king. Actually, no, that's not quite strong enough. For me, character is emperor of the universe. So when I look at these two different styles of games, both of them have different ways of creating characters that you play. Now, games like Dragon Age, and I'm assuming this applies to Mass Effect as well, have a framework where you are creating this character within a backstory that already exists. Whereas with Skyrim, there is no backstory. You get to have total freedom over where your character came from, what kind of experiences they've had in the past, 
and the, everything about their background. And I like both of these methods of character development. In the Dragon Age model, you have these very specific moments of moral choice that you can make. And you can develop your personality, or your character's personality, through their interactions with the NPCs through the course of the game. But in Skyrim, you have more of a blank canvas, and your choices are less how you interact with the other characters, uh, and more where you decide to go in the first place. You can avoid the main quest if you want to and go do anything. So you have more of a blank canvas there. For me, it's hard to make this choice because it's kind of, it's kind of similar to asking a writer, which do you prefer, reading other people's books or writing your own? Because you can't create your own story without consuming other people's stories first. And you can't just consume other people's stories because you'll never have the satisfaction of creating your own. So it's very similar this way because in games like Dragon Age, it's very satisfying to go through this story, this very directed story, and see how it all plays out. But then in Skyrim, I have the freedom, and you've seen this, of course, in A Bard Song, to really create my own story within the world. And I'll tell you something about my experiences playing these two games, these two series. In Dragon Age, I feel like my first playthrough is practically canon in my own mind. I can play other characters for a little bit, I can dabble with other characters, but it always feels like this isn't how it happened. If I make a different choice, that's not the true story. In Skyrim, on the other hand, I have tons of different characters, and it all feels like they have their own valid story within the world. One character might be Dragonborn, but another might be the leader of the Thieves Guild, and the listener of the Dark Brotherhood, and another character may be the Archmage, and another character might just be a farmer. But they all have their own stories that feel just as valid as any other story that I create in that world, because no single character is the focus of that world. There's this whole world to explore and because of that, you'll see, if you look at my Steam account, that I have so many more hours on Skyrim than I have on other games, just because it has more replayability. Whereas Dragon Age, I love it. I love the story, I love the character that I've created, but it's one single story. So I can replay it, but it doesn't feel the same that it it did the first time I played. Um, so that's kind of what it boils down to. How can I choose between the satisfaction of going through a complete story that somebody else created versus the satisfaction of going through a complete story that I create? And I don't know if I can really choose that. So... <laughs> Lots of rambling to say, I don't know, I don't have a preference. So the second question comes from Pelliger, and please forgive me and correct me in the comments below if I mispronounced your name, but Pelliger asks, have you considered other games? Games like Baldur's Gate spring to mind, or you could challenge yourself with games that don't promote roleplay. So the... Short answer to that question is yes, definitely. There are other games that I want to play, and you've probably seen my not completed playthrough of Broken Age Act 1, which I do intend to finish. It's just one of those things that I haven't quite gotten around to yet. Um, but basically on this channel, there are two types of games that I would like to record as I play to put up here, and those two types are role-playing games, 
pretty obviously, and the other type is point-and-click adventure games. Um, I have a whole list of adventure games that I would like to get around to eventually, a sort of short-term series. Um, and then there are three games in particular that I definitely want to play. Two of these games I have promised the developers that I would do a Let's Play series of, and the first of those is Wheaton Lore Dream Time by Druid Gameworks. Most of you have probably heard of this game if you watch Gopher's channel, because he has promoted the game and the Kickstarter that went along with it. Now, I have contributed or pledged to each Kickstarter campaign that Druid Gameworks has done so far. Unfortunately, only the most recent one has succeeded, but it has succeeded, which means that we'll be getting this game, and I have every intention of playing it on the channel. The other game that I have promised to play is called The Whole Story. Some of you may have heard of this, heard of the Kickstarter when it was going around. Now, now this game was developed by a group of young girls at a summer camp, and there were several different teams developing prototype games at this camp, but this team, the Negatives, won the grand prize, and that prize is that their game is going to be developed into a real whole playable game. And I have actually had a chance to interact with the girls a little bit through one of their um, game streams. They're a really great group of girls, and I'm really looking forward to playing this game that they're creating. It's really cool. So go check it out if you haven't already. It's very cool. Now, the third game that I definitely intend to play, though I haven't actually directly promised the developers that I would, is Torment Tides of Numenera by In Exile Entertainment. This is a game that I've been looking forward to for a long time. It's sort of the spiritual successor to Planescape Torment, which is one of the greatest games I've ever played. So you can expect to be seeing that when it comes out. Um, otherwise, there are a number of games that I'm interested in playing, but that I haven't actually committed to at this point. But yes, basically, you will be seeing other games, most of them roleplay oriented, but some of them not. And I hope that you'll enjoy them, and I hope that you'll also contribute your own ideas of games that I could play in the future. The next set of questions comes from Jess Mazingful, who actually had four questions plus a bonus. Um, so we'll just go straight through these in order, with starting with question number one, which is, what made you decide to do a role play rather than a regular LP? Now, this question seemed a little bit strange to me at first, because as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to RPGs, a roleplay is a regular LP, but I, I do recognize that there are a lot of people out there who do non-roleplay LPs. It's just, to me, I don't think I could play that way. Not for very long, anyway. Um, I guess it just seemed natural because of that. I always roleplay in my head while I'm playing games like Skyrim or honestly, a lot of games that aren't actually RPGs as well. Like, when I play Minecraft, for example, I roleplay the hell out of that. I always have a sort of backstory in mind for how I ended up in this strange world, and sometimes I'm an exiled prince or princess or whatever. Sometimes I'm a colonist coming from another planet. Sometimes I've been shipwrecked. But I always have sort of backstory, which guides the way that I interact with the, the world. Um, so even in games that aren't RPGs, I roleplay, which means that it just seemed completely natural to do that for an LP. In fact, the entire reason I did an LP in the first place was because I wanted to roleplay a specific character. So... 
As far as I was concerned, there wasn't any other option. The second question from Jess Mazingful is, do you have any experience in acting, theater, or improv? Um, to be honest, not very much. Besides, when I was a kid, I would do the annual church Christmas play, but other than that, I've had very little experience on stage. I feel like Acting is something I could have really gotten into if circumstances had been different when I was younger, but unfortunately, as a kid, I was bullied within an inch of my life and ended up becoming painfully shy, so the thought of auditioning for any of the plays at school just never occurred to me. I never even thought that that was something that I could do, even though there was a part of me that was definitely interested in it. However, I do have some related experiences that aren't exactly theater, but are sort of similar. Um, for one, when I was in high school, and I started actually making friends, amazingly enough, I co-founded our school's LARP club, our live action role-playing club. And this was justified to the administration as being a drama improv club with the drama teacher as our teacher advisor, even though he never actually showed up to any of our meetings. So there was a little bit of acting, specifically improv, there, even though that was more just an excuse for me being able to make the club official rather than an actuality. Um, the other experience I've had was in college, I was on my college speech team, and my two main events were persuasive speaking and interpretation. Now, basically, interpretation boils down to dramatic readings of different kinds of literature, and that involved a fair amount of acting, specifically vocal acting, because when you do an interp event, you have to stand in one spot, and you have this little black binder that you can use as sort of a prop. You can treat it like, I, well, I've seen people um, prop it up so it looks like a laptop that you're typing on. I've had people use it um, to stand in place of a menu at a restaurant. I've used it for a couple things as a shovel. That was a little bit tricky to do. Or as holding it like a baby, things like that. But you still have to stay in one place, and it's mostly your voice that creates the experience, that creates the interpretation. So to help me with that event, I took a voice class, and this class, it was technically part of the speech department, but most of the people in the class were drama students. So I was surrounded by this atmosphere that I had never really gotten before, this drama atmosphere. And if any of you have been involved in drama or theater, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and I felt that was a really great experience for me, because even though I wasn't really acting on stage, I learned a lot about using my voice, and... I got exposed to this other culture that had only been kind of on the periphery of my life before. So it wasn't really theater experience, but that's about as close as I've gotten. <laughs> Question number three from Jess Mazingful is, do you have a background in D&D or any fantasy driven games? Well, D&D specifically, no. I do have a lot of friends who play it, and I've had several opportunities to play, and you would think that it's the sort of thing that I'd totally be into, but unfortunately I have compelling reasons to avoid the local D&D scene, so I've never really tried it out. Um, other fantasy games, though? Definitely. I've played, well, most of the games that I play are fantasy-based. Um, my first fantasy game, uh, hold on a second, I need to actually go look up what it's called. Okay, so I always forget 
the title of this game, partly because I didn't remember for a really long time and I only just recently rediscovered it, and partly because it actually has two names. It's Dragon Quest, also known as Dragon Warrior, on the Nintendo. This was my first experience playing a fantasy game, and it was also my first RPG, so the two were kind of combined in my mind. Fantasy and RPG go together. Um, after that, I played the Avernum series by Spiderweb Software, or I played the first three games and then the other games I played later. And then I got into Morrowind, and that is where my obsession really bloomed. But yeah, fantasy, I'm all about fantasy. It is my genre. Um, not just in games, but also in books, in movies to a certain extent, although I find it's really hard to do a fantasy movie well, and I usually lean more towards science fiction in the movies. But yeah, fantasy is my number one genre. Science fiction is a close second, but still will never be as dear to my heart as fantasy. So question number four from Jess Amazingful is, what do you do besides YouTube? I guess I'll start out by talking about my day job, and I am a supplemental instruction leader at a community college, which is basically a fancy term for a glorified tutor slash assistant teacher. So what I do is I work in English classes, mostly for students of English as a second language, and I work alongside the instructor to assist the students and help them learn how to learn and learn how to be successful students. In addition to my time in the classroom, I also hold a one hour required study group each week, which is without the instructor present, so it's just me and the students. I really, really love this job. It's really great getting to work with students and help them and see them blossom into stronger students. Um, it's a little bit cheesy, but I really love my job. Outside of work, I have way too many hobbies, most of them creative in some way. Um, so besides gaming, I really love reading and writing, writing fiction. So don't ask me where you can find my work. I don't have anything published yet, but I'm hoping that's something that will happen in the future. And if I do get published, I will let you know. Um, I also do a little bit of things like music, as you've seen with the song that I posted earlier. Um, occasionally a little bit of drawing. But my biggest hobby besides writing and gaming is knitting. I love yarn. I love making things with yarn. I love designing my own patterns. I even will make the yarn itself. I, I spin sometimes. But yeah, I'm usually when I'm watching somebody else's video, I will have knitting in my hands because I can't sit still and watch a video without doing something at the same time. So yeah, that's most of it. There are other things that I dabble in occasionally, but those are the main things. And the final bonus question from Jess Amazingful is, would you rather have a puppy-sized elephant or an elephant-sized puppy? And now, I thought at first that this would be a difficult question to answer, but then it became clear very quickly that if I had an elephant-sized puppy, I would be dead pretty soon. The puppy, you know, puppies are very enthusiastic creatures, and one the size of an elephant would probably suffocate me with love. So I'm going to go for the puppy sized elephant, which sounds incredibly cute and is actually something that I've secretly wanted for a long time, ever since I read a short story that had a kid who owned a very tiny elephant. And I just, I wanted one. So there you go, puppy sized elephant. So I think I'd better stop there for this first installment of the Q&A session because it's gone about 25 minutes now and I'm only about a third of the way through the questions that I received. 
Um, thank you for joining me, and you can expect to see the next set of questions going up soon.